So I was literally just rendering a video with uh, some of the new dragon cards that were shared and then boom. It's your boy. The heavens diminish without my attention. You it's a 10 mana champion. Play invoke a celestial card that costs seven or more. It's a tutor that I was talking about if there was a card that would allow you to invoke a certain amount. Oh, God. So I said, if there's a card that allows you to invoke specific invoke units from seven or above, that would be insane. What the? Okay, 10 minute, 10, 10. Play... Invoke a celestial card that costs seven or more. Round start, create a random celestial card in hand. Okay, so like, it is a huge unit. It demands we play Bastion or have ways of protecting it. This never sticks on the field, right? There's so many answers to this. In Shadow Isles. And Will of Ionia. It is so exciting to see a 10 minute card though. Round start, create a random celestial card in hand. Round end. Level up. Your allies have 20 plus total power. Your favorite star. I created it. This will be. Oh, yeah, these are, just, these are just celestial cards. All right, let's go. Fury. In Violus Vox, 6 mana 5 6 with Fury. When an ally with Fury kills an enemy for the first time each round, create a random dragon in hand. Dude, the sheer amount of value is just getting out of control with some of these cards, man. Pure Starfire. Yep. Horse Champ, we get it. We're summoning Celestials. The constellations bow to me. 10 mana, 11, 11. Chuck overwhelm on this big boy. GG. Fury and Spell Shield. Wait, did the pre leveled up version have Spell Shield too? It did. Oh, sorry for being a pause champ, guys. 10 mana, 11, 11. Play Invoke a Celestial card that costs 7 or more. So when we play it, it's normal. Round start, create a random Celestial card in hand. Your Celestial cards cost 0. So, can you imagine that, that, that this won't happen very often, but can you imagine playing that 10 mana burst speed spell alongside Aurelian Soul? It's got to be a GG by the time Aurelian Souls comes down. Like, how many games do you actually think are going to last that many more turns if Aurelian Soul is unchecked? This is like deep on steroids. Holy shit, man. Alright, let's kick on. There's a destroyer. Let's play a few celestials. Let's fucking end the game, dude. It's, they're even showcasing. They're showcasing how much value there is by showing players how to destroy their own units to replay more cards. God, it's getting out of hand. Look at it, man. What the fuck was that? That's a 15 mana spell! This is it, man. This is the deck. The skies descend slow. Deal 15 to all enemies. Cost who less for each dragon or celestial you have. Okay. This is the this is the finisher. I said that if it we have a really expensive champion that needs to be some sort of finisher that goes alongside it. This is it. Literally, games won't last long once a really soul comes down, so good have fun not seeing and be on the field for long. Oh, Holy all enemies. And the fucking Nexus, right? Oh no, it's not the Nexus. Still, it's not actually the Nexus. Alright. Fuck. 
so let's attempt to break this down in reasonable fashion because we haven't exactly seen a champion <laughs> this expensive, right? Okay, so first of all, I really install 10 mana 10 10 that does come down with the spell shield, does have the fury, which I feel like the fury is just like whatever at this point, right? Because it's just so huge. Playing it to be able to get a certain celestial card from that value, that range of units, is very powerful. Now, we are talking very late into the game. This is an extremely late card. And if you don't kill, basically, if you don't beat the Aurelian Soul deck before it comes down turn 10 and you don't have an ultimate win condition, I think you just will lose. Round start, create a random celestial card in hand. Already, this big idiot is susceptible to a lot of cards in the game. So don't get me wrong. Like, you can Frostbite this card and you can Culling Strike it. You can Vengeance it. You can Will of Ionia it. Will of Ionia probably isn't the best answer to this card unless you're playing Ezreal you're trying to kill your opponent because it will play it the next turn. The fact that it has the spell shield is the most relevant thing here because otherwise there's no way this would ever stick around without it. And you've only got one spell shield. So a lot of the time you're going to be able to play Aurelian Soul into the field and your opponent is not going to be able to answer it. This I say this because like they would need to have two spells. They have to have the Vile Feast into the Vengeance. Right? And then you could all also have a Bastion as well to protect it. Or ways of granting it a spell shield. It's not too crazy for Shadow Wilds to deal with this card, but for a lot of other regions, it gets a little wacky. So the round end, your allies have 20 plus total power. So you basically have need to have on board two other five attack units. I'm guessing it would count yourself. I'm not sure if Aurelian Soul counts itself. I, I think it would. I have to get clarification on that. Regardless, you have to have a couple of other beefy units. I hope it counts itself. It probably doesn't because that might be a little bit crazy then. So assuming that it doesn't count itself, which seems like the most reasonable keywording here, then you would need to have a full board of just powerful units for this guy to actually flip. If Aurelian Soul ever actually flips, then I think the game should be very close to wrapping up, right? At that point, the game has to like kind of wrap up. It's just a crazy value engine. It's like Karma on steroids. It's just a big unit. It's, it's a lot of stuff going on here. But shall we talk about the other cards? So we have the Infinite Mind Splitter. 8 mana, 8, 8 with Fury. Play, pick two enemies, round start, stun them. Well, that's different because it's not like it's it's you're picking the units. It's similar to the six mana card from Noxus, Minotaur Reckoner, but you pick those enemies. So at the round start, they will get stunned. It's only on the play and that's about it. This card probably probably won't see a tremendous amount of play. Like just judging by the rest of the stuff that's going on, decks are going to be so tight. Would you play the Infinite Mind Splitter at this point? As an eight mana, eight, eight to stun two units on the board. Like, I don't know. Unironically, I think this is a really good card, but it probably doesn't necessarily fit into an Aurelian Soul deck because you're gonna have to like figure out other ways of building this list. I don't know, guys, like there's so much going on here. I can't even comprehend it right now. Like compared to Bilgewater, the amount of sheer craziness happening right now is unfathomable. It's gonna take a lot of deck testing. It's gonna take a lot of theory crafting to actually figure out what these lists would look like. My initial impressions say the Infinite Mind Splitter is a great card. Unironically, probably doesn't see a lot of play though. It's just an 8 mana 8 8. It gets the stun cards. So I say it's a great card. It looks great. It, it feels like it's a strong card, but actually, it's probably not the best finisher. So maybe it's not just that good of a card. If that makes sense. I probably got a little bit. Um, I probably got a little bit hypey there. Realistically, um, there's better finishes than this Mind Splinter. But if you're playing an Aurelian Soul deck, you maybe consider using one of these as some sort of like control tool and sustainability and slowing down the pace of the game. And it's not the worst there. Helps you against like big other beefy units. In Violus Vox, the card below it is Fury 6 mana 5 6. Oh yeah, we saw this in the trailer. So when an, when an ally with Fury kills an enemy for the first time each round, create a random dragon in hand. If you're making a dragon deck, which I will share footage of me talking about the other dragon cards after this. This is a pretty reasonable choice. It's actually not too bad. It does generate lots of value in hand. And that's kind of what I was talking about in the, the footage with the dragons after this. That 
if like dragons can like generate value then like the, the egg gets a lot better cards like this get a lot better it has fury so it gains stats this card's okay i don't see it fitting necessarily into a aurelian soul deck but i definitely see another potential deck that could exist that's like a dragon deck that this could be a decent finisher although it's not a dragon star shaping burst speed spell i'm guessing this might be that's not a really soul spell dude a really soul spell is actually sorry for getting off track here a really soul spell is actually that slow speed spell wow anyway invoke a celestial card that costs seven or more so there's your card that allows you to actually find those expensive um invoke cards i was actually talking about this in my card reviews so I don't know how powerful this is though, because I said if there's cards that are laid to invoke those certain cost price ranges, then they get a lot better because those cards are really insane. You get to heal your Nexus for five. Five mana heal your Nexus for five. Invoke a very powerful card. In a control deck, this is surely insane. Like if there's a deck that maybe doesn't run a million soul, you probably still run cards like Star Shaping. If this is like the deck they're trying to build. Immediately, I just see it alongside Karma in Iona. It's just been a crazy late game bomb that you can play alongside Karma. Let's say, for example, a Aurelian Soul is too slow. And we're looking for a control deck that just sh sheer value, right? Spooky Karma. That maybe goes Demacia and uh, Targon. You can definitely run a card like this simply because this is your finisher. You get to turn 10, you have Karma on the field, you play Star Shaping. You protect it with Bastions and stuff like that. You play Star Shaping, you find a couple destroyers. And you just start doing crazy stuff with uh, value. You have to figure out a way to do those rules well though. So I really souls this guy's this end. This is literally the card that will end the game a lot of times. Imagine denying this. So it gives you a reason to consider running dragons strictly because you get that reduction with dragons as well. So deal 15 to all enemies, cost two less for each dragon or celestial ally you have. So dragons or celestials need to be on the field. Shuffle a really soul into your deck. I mean, yeah, you play this alongside a really soul. To push with all your units in the game this just gives you breathing room for getting by chump blockers so games are going to end within a few turns once a really souls on the field if he's undealt with messenger signal shuffle five the messages into your deck what the fuck is the messengers so i actually don't know what the messengers are if anybody knows hook me up because is it a card I've already seen or am I tripping? Oh, the messengers. Is that one of the, um, actually, I think that's one of the, that's one of the, um, celestial cards, right? The two mana, two, two that draws you a card. One mana, add a shit ton of value into your deck that every time you find it, you just draw cards. This reminds me of that card from freaking Hearthstone, the, um, Hunter Quest card that shuffles the Raptors into your deck and every time you draw them, you draw another card. And you have the potential to keep snowballing. Like you can sometimes play messages signal, signal, just because, right? This is also the anti deep card, sort of. Not really. It's a bad example, but yeah, it's the anti milieu opponent's deck card. You can sometimes you can sometimes play this kind of early, right? And then you can draw messenger into messenger, and then keep filling out your curve because they keep cycling themselves. I think, it's, I think this card's kind of a meme, but um, it might see some uses that we don't necessarily see right now. So anyway, guys, that was a really soul. That is a lot to take in. But after this, I'm going to talk about some of the other dragon cards that I had recorded pre to this. So if you want to continue watching, I'll leave that in the next bit. What is up, guys? Apparently, I won't be sleeping anytime soon. More cards. <laughs> So the Runeterra Twitter revealed some more Fury cards, I believe, in Dragons. Let's get it. Fury. So we saw this to clarify Fury's new keyword. When I kill a unit, grant me plus one, plus one. Two mana, one, one, Herald of Dragons. Dragon allies cost one less. Okay. <laughs> Let's see what we'll see what we got here. Let's see how valuable Herald of the Dragons really would be. So I'm gonna guess dragons are all gonna share a very similar keyword in Fury. 4 mana 4-4 four, four with Fury. 5 mana 5-5 five, five with Spell Shield and Fury. 
Five mana, four, five with Challenger and Fury. Dragon's Clutch. Three mana burst speed spell. Draw two, draw two different dragons or grant dragon allies plus one, plus one. Yeah, these are... <laughs> Dude, it's such an exciting time right now. Um, yeah, not a lot to work with here. Not a lot to work with here. But this could be like some sort of new aggro deck, some sort of new mid-range deck. Like it's a very, it's cool because they have like all the celestial nonsense, right? But then they also have these kind of, I'm assuming are just going to be beefy, plain kind of dragon cards. For players who like are not too sure of how to build a really uh, in-depth control -y deck, this would be a different avenue for players to build into. And this could be quite budget friendly, I think. These are from Targon as well though, so it's probably going to have something to do with Aurelian Soul as well. But then when Shivana comes out, she might come with some sort of synergy. So let's assume... Okay, so I guess we'll, 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 we'll evaluate the cards as usual. The Fury keyword does seem like it could be pretty interesting. Like there's been cards in the past that like when they kill units and they buff up, they can sometimes get out of hand. But in Rune's Hero though, uh, without Challenger, your opponent doesn't have to block your Fury units. But the problem is too, if they're not blocking your Fury units, they might be taking face damage. So then in hence, it's the sacrifice they have to choose. This punishes chump blockers, basically. It's another way of punishing chump blockers. Herod of the Dragons. Dragon allies cost one less. Depending on how many cheap dragons there might be, let's say we get offered a few cheap one to two mana dragons. Herald of the Dragons becomes extremely playable if those dragon cards are decent. Outside of just the pure mid-range units, it might be hard to sometimes curve out this unit. I see, I just, I visualize, Her I visualize Herald of the Dragons fitting alongside other cheap dragons mostly. So you can have like explosive turns. And then because we'll follow up with the Dragon's Clutch, because we have a card like this that exists, it rewards that kind of play style as well. The ability to this like, Splash your hand out, buff them, go for a super aggressive token style dragon deck, or the option to draw dragons makes building a token styled aggressive dragon deck a very, very good option. Out of all the other cards here, this is probably the main card to talk about that has the ability to tie dragons together. Even though we haven't seen a lot of other cards, and I'm not sure, I might be wrong, I can only really tell you that if there's a way to build an aggressive token style dragon deck and we get offered a few cheaper dragons, this card is going to be the reason why that works. Without this card, I wouldn't even see any value in this. I mostly just want to see cheap dragons that have above average stat lines that maybe come with the Fury keyword to kind of like dominate the early game completely and get super good trades into weak invoke units or they ignore you and you go face maybe you go uh Demacia into Targon and you start to run Decimates and maybe this is a way to kind of build a decent aggro deck that works i might be wrong though there might be some really crazy mid-range units like for now these like kind of really plain standard units will only get tied together if we have like powerful spells outside of assuming that we don't get powerful spells dragon's clutch as i said allows you to kind of draw into these units on curve as well so maybe you fuck up your curve early you can at least find a dragon's clutch which will probably oftentimes be a heavy keep in a lot of opening hands because of how cheap it is but yeah, this is really cool. I like the aesthetics on that card too. It's amazing. I think the um, this card's okay. I think the Challenger Screeching Dragon's probably going to be powerful. By the way, that is from Demacia, actually. I didn't notice that. This is a Demacian Dragon. Shivana coming soon. So yeah, you can't exactly run Screeching Dragon unless you're going Demacia Targon. And I'm pretty sure this was... Yeah, the Dragon's Clutch was a Targon card. So we're more than likely going to see a lot of um, units coming, uh, dragon units coming from Demacia, which might kind of push you into building Demacia and uh, Targon, which means you kind of get access to a lot of those cheap Demacian spells that reward killing units, single combat, concerted strike, fury, it all synergizes. So yeah. I think we'll wait and see. I'm sure we're going to see some more information tomorrow. It's kind of funny though, because we are seeing, we're seeing splashes of PNZ cards, splashes of Demacia cards, but without a doubt, we're not going to get all of these champions right now. So we might have to wait for a bit before these decks come together. For now, we have a few options here. Hopefully they give us something that can at least make this somewhat playable. 
If not, these dragon cards will kind of like be left to the side until we see further synergies. You guys have a fantastic day and I will see you tomorrow.